coding projects are a great way to expose yourself to the full use case of a language or framework you're learning. They are by far the most effective way to master a language, not to mention they can be challenging, fun, and they definitely look good on a portfolio or a resume. Here are a few full stack coding projects you can work on to improve your web development skills, as well as give you insight into how most of the software applications you use every day are designed. The first is a URL shortener. As the name suggests, it simply shortens a URL. You give it a long URL and it gives you a shorter URL that redirects back to the original URL. The popular URL shorteners are tinyurl and bit.ly. For this project, you'll have two main components. The first component collects the long URL from the user and creates a short URL. The second component handles the redirecting when the short URL is queried. The first component is relatively straightforward. It'll be a simple web page with a form where the user submits the long URL. The system stores it, then generates a short URL for the user. When the user goes to the address of the short URL, the second component does a lookup for the short URL, finds the long URL associated with it, and redirects to that URL. The major front-end and back-end stacks will work for a project like this. I made a video building this exact project. That video is linked above and in the description below if you're interested. I use React for the front-end and Python Flask for the back-end with Firebase as the database. You can use any tech stack you want. This is also a great project for you to explore working with other tech stacks that you're unfamiliar with. The MVP for this project will be what I described earlier. If you finish it early or want a bit of a challenge, you can set up user accounts where the user can see all the URLs they've created, allowing them to see how many times someone has gone to that URL. You can also allow them to delete and edit URLs they've created. Those functionalities will add an extra layer of complexity to the project. Working on this project will give you an insight into designing database schemas, creating APIs and redirecting, which is very popular in many services. The second project is one that definitely requires the user to set up an account. It's a Linktree clone. Linktree is a social media reference landing page. It houses all the URLs to a person's social media profile. You've probably seen it in a lot of bios. I use Linktree as an example because it's the most popular one, but there are tons of others out there. This would be an interesting project and the way I would start it would be to think about making it for one person, then figure out scaling from there. If I were making a link tree for myself, I would need a database to store all of my links, an admin page where I can directly edit the contents of the database, and finally, a page that shows the links to other people so they can click on it. After I do this for myself, the next step would be to encapsulate this logic and duplicate it for multiple people. For example, linktree.com forward slash Uma pulls all of Uma's links from the database and a similar thing will happen for others. Working on this project will teach you a lot about routing and database design. The pattern where a special identifier is used after a domain is common everywhere. Linktree, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and a lot of other services use it. Successfully designing this will give you an insight into how those bigger systems work. MVP for this project will be to create a page for yourself, making sure you can edit the links from the admin page and not hard coding them to the site. You can use any tech stack for this one, but I would recommend going with React for the front end and Python Django for the back end. The third project is a simple messaging app. Messaging is core in a lot of applications and can be implemented in many ways. The simplest way is to have two clients connected to a server. One client sends a message to the server, the other client picks up the message from the server and sends a message back to the server, and then the first client picks it up and so on and so forth. This communication protocol would be HTTP and would use a request response model. You can then go a step further by using WebSockets. This will keep a constant channel open between the client and the server, meaning the clients don't have to request messages. It will be sent to them automatically when one is available. This project is back-end heavy and will teach you a lot about using WebSockets used in many services like video calling, video streaming, and so on. I've linked an article down below that goes over how to start working on a project like this. The final project is a web application that transfers playlists from Spotify to Apple Music or vice versa. All the previous projects required you to build your own API, but this one requires you to work with APIs built by other companies, specifically Apple Music and Spotify. Say I want to transfer an entire playlist from one platform to another. I would have to manually create the playlist, search for the songs, then add them to the playlist. This manual process can take a long time depending on the number of songs and playlists. Luckily, both platforms have APIs we can call to perform those manual actions. Here's a high level breakdown. The idea is to get the playlist from Spotify, get the songs in the playlist, search for those songs on Apple Music, find those songs, create a playlist on Apple Music, then add them to the newly created playlist. I worked on this exact project and documented it as well, so feel free to use those videos as guidance. 
You don't have to stick with Spotify and Apple Music for this one. You can play around with YouTube Music or SoundCloud as well, as long as they have APIs. The general idea is the same. All you're doing is transferring data from one platform to another one. This project is back-end focused and will teach you a lot about working with APIs, authorization versus authentication, and give you an insight into how these mega companies design their APIs so you can learn and design yours as well. MVP for this project is for the app to transfer a playlist with 50 songs. And if you finish that early, you can transfer multiple playlists or even a whole music catalog, including podcasts and more. There are some interesting problems you will run into with this one and it will challenge you to come up with very interesting solutions. Always remember that you don't have to start from scratch with a lot of these projects. I tried my best to give a high level design of the project so you can start from there. Pick a component and start working. If you get stuck or don't know how to do something, there are resources out there for you. There are people who have done the project before and have documented the whole process on YouTube or as articles. Go learn from them. It'll take you time to work on some of these projects, so be patient with yourself. It'll also take you time to understand some concepts or code snippets, but once you do, you'll have that knowledge forever. Also, just because it's been done before doesn't mean you can't and shouldn't do it. The main aim of you doing it is to learn and gain experience. Every new software today is built on the same pillars. REST APIs, client application, databases, and more. Learning the core concepts behind them will put you in a good spot to contribute to any project in the future. That's all I have for you on this one. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Peace.